Good evening and welcome to the Parks and Natural Resources Commission meeting for Monday, October 1st, uh, 2012. Going on the agenda, the first item is approval of the agenda. Any changes from staff or commissioners? Nothing from staff. We need a motion to approve then? So moved. Here's a second. 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 All approved, say aye. 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 Opposed? Next item on the agenda is an opportunity for citizens to approach the commission on an item that is not on the agenda. Anybody in the audience wish to approach the commission? All right. No one's approaching. I'll we'll move on. And approval of the minutes from the August 20th, 2012 meeting. Any changes from staff or commissioners? No changes from staff, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. A second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes approved. Next item is uh, it's to discuss or to review the uh, wetland monitoring program. And our presenter. Liz Forbes. Is Liz Forbes. Natural Resources Technician, City of Burnsville? Yes, that's correct. So I'm here to talk about the Wetland Health Evaluation Program, WEP for short. And so what is WEP? Um, the program began in 1997 and was, is coordinated by Dakota and Hennepin County staff. Uh, the program calls on volunteers to collect data in the wetlands that are within their own communities. And these wetlands are selected by the sponsoring agency in the case of the Burnsville web team um, that is the city of Burnsville so um, and specifically myself I select the four wetlands um, for to be monitored uh, the counties which is Dakota and Hennepin counties they provide the training to the volunteers the equipment and the final report and this is what the report looks like and they send this out every year and this report includes all of the data from all of the wet programs including Burnsville So the Burnsville WEP team had about 12 volunteers this year and they monitored four wetlands and often the, the volunteers are Burnsville residents themselves. Sometimes we get from outlying communities and often we have repeat volunteers so it's really good to get not only new volunteers but you have some with experience from year to year. And the data they collect in wetlands influences the city's surface water plans and often the data they collect is the only data that we have from these wetlands. So it's a really important uh, data that they collect. Um, and us as staff with the city, we take this data, we look at it, and we can use this for reporting requirements, for state reporting requirements. Um, and we also use it for grant applications. So say like we have a project going on in one of the parks, we can refer to the, the WEP data to say, okay, you see we have some quality wetland here. And that'll help us in our application for grants. Why should we care about wetlands? Wetlands act as filters for water pollution. They act as sponges that soak up water to reduce flooding. They're nurseries for wildlife. They're hotels for migrating birds such as ducks, and they're also recreation destinations for people to escape from everyday life. Um, a lot of our, our wetland areas have trails nearby. Um, you might be familiar with the Kramer Nature Preserve here in Burnsville. It has a lot of trails that go around the wetlands, and it's a really a chance for people to escape, observe wildlife, and just get away from it all. And Minnesota has lost about half of its wetlands since becoming a state. And so we really need to take care of those wetlands that we have left. Keep an eye on, on them and make sure that they're doing their job. So in this program, WEP, the volunteers visit each of the wetlands. Those are the four wetlands that we've chosen to monitor. They visit each wetland three times during the season, which runs from early spring through midsummer. The first trip is to set what we call bottle traps. Um, and they're essentially old soda bottles, plastic two liter soda bottles stuck in the water and those are used as traps to collect macroinvertebrates. The second trip is to go back, collect those traps, see what they caught and also to take dip nets, stick those in the water and see what other invertebrates they can find. And then the third trip, they go back and look at the vegetation of the wetland. And the volunteers, while they're there, they also collect 
site observations, such as did they see any wildlife there? Did they notice anything in particular about that wetland? They draw a sketch of the site. Um, and then when they're there on their third trip looking at the plants, they draw a, a, not only a map, but they note what vegetation is there and how much of this plot that they choose to observe, what percentage of plants is in that, that plot. And I mentioned they go there the first and second time to collect the invertebrates. They take these invertebrates, store them, and then take those back to the lab and identify each of those. And I'll talk a little bit more about that part of it right now. Um, the invertebrates they collect, invertebrates essentially are just small little spineless critters. And they include dragonfly and damselfly larvae, which are aquatic, mayfly and caddisfly larvae, which are also aquatic. All of these are aquatic creatures. Uh, macro crustaceans, so we're talking about little tiny crustaceans, uh, leeches, snails, fly larvae, and clams. And if you look on the slide, these are a couple of our volunteers using a dip net. So they take that net and they put it in the water, they beat the vegetation, they shake all those little critters out, and then they take that net, dump it into a sieve, and then from that sieve they can collect their invertebrates. And this is a close-up picture of an actual sample and you can see snails, you can see back swimmers, you can see some worms, some water boatmen. Those are just some of the, the animals that are living in these wetlands. And what's important about the invertebrates that are in the wetlands is some species of invertebrates are more tolerant of pollution than others. For example, stonefly larvae it's in the sensitive group. So if you have, if you find stonefly larvae in your wetland, you know that you have a pretty healthy wetland because if there was much pollution, that animal would not be there. Uh, something like a rat-tailed maggot, which is a, a larva of a fly, um, it's very tolerant of pollution. So if that one's there, that doesn't necessarily mean you have a polluted wetland, but if you are absent of all the sensitive species, then that gives you a clue where this wetland doesn't have any of these sensitive species, so we may want to start looking at the, what's causing the, the health of this wetland to be lower than it could be. The, wet, the volunteers in the WET program, they also assess the vegetation within a 100 square meter plot. So they take a measuring tape out with them, they measure off a 100 square meter plot, and the plants that they find, they categorize into these five groups, which are non-vascular, which include things as mo moss and lichens, low vascular, which includes horsetails and ferns, woody shrubs and trees, the grass-like plants, which include sedges and rushes, and forbs, which are your broadleaf plants. And again, the same as with the invertebrates, the greater the diversity of plants in a wetland, the healthier that wetland is. And here's a map showing our wetlands in the city of Burnsville that are in the WET program. The ones with the red stars on them, those are the four that were monitored this year. Um, in fact, every year, Kramer and Crystal West are two wetlands that we've been monitor monitoring yearly since the program began, or nearly since the program began. Um, and then the other two wetlands alternate depending on essentially who's next on the list. We try to select one that hasn't been looked at in a few years. So at least we know that they're getting looked at once in a while. Um, so you can see Kramer, that was obviously one that was done this year and Crystal West are done every year. Owl Magnet Dog Park and then Kelleher. And the results from this year, Kramer s scored poorly in invertebrate diversity, which means there were very few species of invertebrates found and it scored moderate in vegetation. Crystal West, excellent invertebrate diversity. Uh, moderate in vegetation. Alamagnet Dog Park, excellent, and then moderate. Kelleher Park, moderate in vertebrate diversity, but poor in vegetation. So, but what does that really tell us? One season of data really doesn't tell us a lot. What we want to look at are the trends in the data. There's really a lot of variation from year to year depending on temperature, um, rainfall. We had a very early spring this year, so that can influence when the volunteers go out, you know, what's, what's happened with the vegetation? Is the water level dropped? So are there less invertebrates because there's not as much water available? Some wetlands dry up, and so your invertebrates just aren't there to collect at all. So what we really want to look at are trends through time. And this is just an example of Kramer. 
Um, this year, Kramer scored poor for invertebrates and moderate in vegetation. Well, last year, Kramer scored excellent in invertebrates and poor in vegetation. So it kind of did a, a flip-flop. But averaged out over time, Kramer is a moderate, is really moderately healthy in both invertebrates and vegetation. But if we had seen a very persistent poor score for invertebrates and vegetation over several years, that will say, okay, we need to take a look at this wetland, what's going on there to cause, cause these to have low levels. Um, so this is the, the 15th year that Kramer has been in the program. Um, and if you look at this, uh, it's really kind of through time, it's, it's been fairly, fairly stable and that's what we like to see. So what do we do with this data? Uh, we use the WEP data when updating our wetland management plans. Um, the data can also help us focus on where to target our surface water improvements. So we're seeing a wetland that um, is, is declining in health through time, then we may focus on that area as far as, well, what can we do to improve the water quality in this area? And so with that, I'd like to introduce Jeff Zilka. He is the team leader for the Burnsville WEP team. Um, so Jeff spearheads the volunteer group. Um, he sets the schedule for the, the data collection um, and is involved in the training. And so um, I'll let him take it over. Hi, I'm kind of new at this, speaking in front of crowds. <laughs> Not a very big crowd, but <laughs> anyhow, um, I had awesome volunteers this year. I had like 12 people sign up, and 11 really went through the whole program, went to all the, the classes that they had and stuff. And out of all the teams, you know, they do Lakeville and uh, Egan, and anyhow, my team had the most volunteers and the best attendance. It was just awesome. And last year, I actually had a doctor that was on the team with her daughter because she was coming out of college and she wanted to have her have some of this biology background for going back into college. And um, so, yeah, that it's, it's really cool for all the people to get out there. And they look up to me because, you know, I've been doing this probably seven, eight years. And I'm a duck hunter, so I'm, I'm used to walking in sloughs and stuff. And, and they're, they can't believe that I walk out there the way I do, but, hey, I'm used to it. But um, I just try to make it fun for them, and we, we find a lot of interesting things to different, like water bugs. One last year at Crystal Lake, we must have found one about a half dollar size water bug. Yeah, I've never seen them that huge. And um, like I said, uh, and then the Dakota County Fair, I had like four people sign up for that. They sit in a booth, and they talk to people that come through, and look at the bugs and tell them what we're doing and, and why we're doing it and stuff. And it's just a good program. Okay. Yeah, and with that, um, we'll take some questions. <coughs> yeah, I'd <coughs> love to have you take some questions. And that's a very <laughs> 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 yeah. and, and is there anyone else who would like to go first? Or? Just wondering if you could elaborate on the, the kind of training that you give the volunteers. <clears throat> well, they have um, four-hour classes for the invertebrate. We um, go into um, Intergrove Heights Fields or College, and they show slides and stuff on the different bugs and how to identify between the different bugs. And, you know, it's pretty intense. Okay. A lot of people are going, oh, my God. But, and I just hey, you don't have to be perfect biologists. You know, we just do the best we can. Okay. And then with the vegetation, we uh, collect a bunch of different plants from areas, and then we put them all in their um, locations where, like, woody plants and vascular plants and stuff like that. And then we look at them, and so then when we go out in the field, hopefully we remember what we're seeing and, you know, write it down. And they do provide you with resources, guides, field guides, okay. um, oh, yeah, I guess. Th that type of thing. So they're not sending them out there with a training out blind. Okay, now go go tell me what these plants are. Um, they do bring the resources with them. They have some keys so they can key out the plants based on characteristics, right. leaf shape, uh, where the plant's located, whether it's emergent, emergent, that type of plant. 
-hmm. So they do get quite a bit of training. And, and the thing he was talking about at the fair, um, that takes place after the after the field season, right, is towards the end. Everything is yeah. correct. And, and so they, it, it's a great way to try to recruit more volunteers is, is Jeff and other volunteers going on site, allowing people to ask questions, hopefully learn a little bit about wetlands, why they're important, um, and then hopefully we'll mm -hmm. volunteer with one of their nearby groups. Yeah. I have like two or three people that come back pretty much every year. And the, the other ones, they do it for one year and they go, man, this is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I think they're glad they did it. And, mm -hmm. That's the way it is. Yeah, you have to have enough uh, waiters. They, D Dakota County provides waiters for everyone, um, and usually you can get at least close to your correct size, right? Mm -hmm. So those mucky wetlands, sometimes when you walk in, you have to, it's a little tricky. A lot of people have sticks to help them walk yeah. in. I know I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, it's a good group. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what is the process of other citizens wants to join, or in case they are interested? Is it a website or other places? and the timing of uh, these events that are happening? When is the earliest they can sign? If you can give me a little bit of that information. Well, I, I think Paula, she's the head of the program, the Dakota County. She'll, she'll take anybody at almost any time. But uh, they go to the web website, and that's where they have to sign up and fill out some paperwork and stuff like that. And then they get the schedule and stuff like that. And then, then I get a call, and if they're on my team, then I call them up. And what is the time commitment you're looking for a season? Well, <clears throat> you know, that's what people say, you know, because we go out t two times a week for four weeks in June, and then two times in July, and, you know, it's just a lot, and then the class is in between, and they're all going, hey, and I said, hey, you just make whatever you can make. This isn't like you're working for it, you know, <laughs> you just come when you can. And a lot of people, you know, are good about coming, you know, about every other time, and, and it works out good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, volunteers can be as young as high school with permission. Yeah. They have to have their, their parents sign a permission slip. Under 18. Yeah, yeah under 18. Um, and, yeah, otherwise, I think it's a pretty simple application process. You pretty much say you want to do it. They get some details from you, and then you well, can And they used to do background checks, but I guess they quit doing scares that. scares people off, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> any you. other questions? Thank yes. You. Well, first of all, bravo. Um, I think this is great, and I really appreciate you and the volunteers taking the time to do this. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's beneficial in many ways. The, the, the results that you find, I have no doubt that they're of significant <coughs> benefit to the city. Um, I think just being out, every one of you and each volunteer and meeting others and showing them what you're collecting and so forth all that spreads a message that we're interested in our environment that is meaningful to us and spreading that message is important because when others realize that it's meaningful to the city and to their neighbors it becomes more meaningful to them i think so um I'm, I'm thrilled that you do it and that you take the time to do it and i hope that you have plenty of volunteers Mm -hmm. Along those lines, I teach an environmental biology course. So if you're ever short of volunteers, <laughs> I think I could probably send some your way with a little offer of extra credit. So don't be afraid. To, so don't be afraid to uh, contact me. In fact, I'm somewhat serious. I might contact you. It'd be a great experience for some of my students, and um, they might be able to to be of help too. I get some good ones, and um, they uh, have taken natural history in many cases, and. It might be able to help you with some of the identifications. Um, do you do you take any abiotic uh, samples? Do you do you, te do you check uh, water temperature, for example, dissolved oxygen, oil, um, any of those kinds of things? We we take the water temperature when okay. we're collecting the bugs, but we don't check any of the water quality or oils or any of that stuff. Okay, We've seen some of it. We do have a program that does, it's the uh, <laughs> CAMP program, the Citizen Assisted Monitoring Program. It's another program, and they monitor seven lakes in Burns Bell. And those, they, they collect a lot more of that abiotic um, data that you're mentioning. Are they collecting it at the same location? No, they're, they're not. Collecting? Um, it's it's the, the larger lakes, so Crystal yeah. Lake, um, Allen Magnet Lake, those larger, Sunset, um, some of those larger areas. Costs? are an issue getting enough volunteers are an issue i understand all that i certainly think that having those 
if we could coordinate that, having the abiotic information can often shed a lot of light on what's going on with the fluctuations and so forth in, in what you're sampling mm -hmm. biotically. So I personally, if I were going to review your data and look at it, that's one of the first things I'd want to know is what was the water temperature, um, uh, dissolved oxygen, that kind of thing. So I'd encourage um, hmm. maybe checking that. Yeah. And um, I'm also curious as to you're, you're looking at invertebrates, insects in particular. Do you um, have anything you can share with us regarding amphibians? So amphibians are pretty good, they're, they're a good indicator species. They're relatively sensitive to water quality and other factors in the uh, environment and in the watershed. And I'm curious if you're seeing tadpoles, uh, adult salamanders, that kind of thing. Any, any of that? Well, yeah, we, um, we throw the tadpoles out of their specimens because we're not supposed to have them in there, you know, so we just get rid of them. And, we note uh, that you see them in the in Oh, yeah, the report, we, we right? note in the report. But not to the species. And then, uh, well, crayfish, but I think that's an invertebrate. Crayfish, mm -hmm. we get those once in a while. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, yeah, but there's no specific study on amphibian populations. No. Do you see significant fluctuations, do you think? How many years have you been doing it? Well, I've been doing about seven years. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, like with the, the way the summer was spring came so early and then we went out june 1st there were so much uh, um what are they called uh, dragonfly nymphs that were hanging onto the weeds i mean they're the casings they were had emerged yeah yeah they already emerged so they weren't going to be in our sample because they were already gone right. so and then plus um, dog part had a lot of big minnows in our water traps so when you get minnows in your water traps, they eat all the bugs that are in there, so that kind of messes up your survey, too. But I don't know how you allow for it. Biology is messy. You, you need lots of statistics <laughs> <laughs> to allow for it. But. Minnesota does have the Minnesota toad and frog call survey. I don't know if you're familiar with that one, too. But, yeah, we currently don't have a route here in, in Burnsville. Um, that program, the volunteer would go out. Typically, it's three times during the early, middle, and late season, and can stops the wetland and listens for a certain amount of time and records the essentially presence absence of frog species in, in a wetland. But uh, yeah, it'd be wonderful to get a volunteer who'd be interested in doing that. Well, we are doing a frog survey in Murphy Hanrahan Park right okay. now. That's been going on for two years, so we'll just that's part of my my interest. And I think I'll um, uh, let others have the the mic or, and let this go other than I might contact you and yeah. see about catching up to you next year just to see what you're doing and mm -hmm. to see what you're what you're finding oh yeah well I actually do a frog and turd raw frog and toad survey yeah. down in the other in the southern part of Dakota County every year Great. I've been doing it for like 15 years so maybe there was some way I could would you like to do Burnsville too? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, Terry. I don't know if you. I guess someone did one briefly in, in the good old days, because uh, uh, I was here for the start of the program. But we used to do a frog survey as part of it. I think it was just became a matter of resources and the number of volunteers that we could get. But I'm not sure when that ended. I think it continued on for four or five years. Okay. So we do have some older data. Okay. You would like to. Yeah, it doesn't take. It's you know, I I'd glad to do another another one. It's it's I really enjoy it going out there and at dark and listening to frogs call. So. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um. Well, t talk to me later because if we can establish a route here, yeah, tied into like the wet program, the camp program, that'd be a really great way of some new okay. information. Oh, um, just kind of on a similar note of Commissioner Wolf, uh, if you're. I'm wondering if is the county fair the only way you people can find out about the program because I've never heard of the program until now. We do. Um, the Burnsville Bulletin has an announcement every spring, and that's when I've been out with the volunteers. That seems to be the number one way that they find out about the program here in Burnsville. Um, the Dakota County, who is in charge of the wet program, they put out news releases about the program. Um, I, I put flyers around 
the city of Burnsville coffee shops. I mean, I don't hit everyone, but I put <laughs> a few up here and there, the library, um, those types of places. And what else do we do? Um, these guys themselves are great ambassadors because when they're out visiting a wetland, I especially remember uh, the Alamagnet Dog Park. Mm -hmm. um, this year you guys had a sign. Um, I'll show it to you. It's, it's a really great sign because they really did get a lot of people. You know, a lot of people look at them funny <laughs> well, yeah. when they're out there. <laughs> yeah. But here's a picture of their group. Whoops. Picture of the group with their sign, Web Volunteers at Work. And so that alone, people see the sign and they get drawn in. So well, what are you guys doing? So they actually feel like they can come up and talk to you. It's just not a random group of people out there waiting around in the wetland. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was a great idea. His, his uh, Jeff's yeah. wife, Luann, made it and she did a fantastic job, so. And I, yeah, I was just gonna say, I'm sure um, a lot of high school students would be interested in something like this. I mean, not a huge number, but I'm sure if you did something simple enough as send an email to because I'm in an environmental science mm -hmm. class right now, and I, I think a lot of people would uh, possibly jump at an opportunity like this. Is there a particular teacher? Because I, I could obviously, I mean, I do create a flyer, and I'd be happy to, to forward that to. Yeah, I'm sure she would She would announce it to her classes, and okay. mm -hmm. maybe some people would want to volunteer. I don't know. Would you give me her name? Sure, um, I can write it down. And yeah, and then I can, I can forward that to her when I, I send out the announcement. OK. Cool. Liz, can people find information on our website also? Mm -hmm. Yes, we there is. There is information on our website. Um, it's it's a real brief summary, and then also directs people to the the WEP program website, which is hosted by Dakota County, where they can find out more details about well, how much time do I have to spend on this, and and what are you doing out in the wetland? Um, so yeah, there is information in both places. All right. Any other comments? Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yep. Okay, uh, the next item is miscellaneous. Any miscellaneous items from staff or commissioners? Um, from staff, uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, uh, we'd like you to hold open uh, October 15th. That's a Monday, two weeks away. Uh, and ask you to work an extra meeting this month. We can't give you any more pay, but um, oh. uh, we're hoping you can make it. We do need to review uh, the plans for the Cliff and Park Playground replacement. Okay. Uh, we are holding off uh, pending. We're trying to get some donations, and that will impact the plans. Uh, if we can raise some additional money, that will change the plans. So that's why it's kind of coming down to the wire, but we would like to get this uh, going through the approval process as quickly as we can. So if you would uh, hold October 15th open, we probably won't be on camera because somebody else is in the council chambers that evening, uh, but we would like to have a meeting at 6.30 and I'll let you know on the location. Okay, sounds good. With that, we uh, need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you and good night.